Okay, okay, all right, there we go. All right, hold your Bibles up, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it. Say, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Look at somebody and say, that's what I want, the truth. Amen, amen. Now listen to lies all day long. Now, give me the truth. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Listen, so you should have, if you don't, if you came in late and you don't have a pamphlet, I ran some copies off again today. I ran some copies off again today because uh, I know you probably done put it down. You've been out for a month, you know, put it down. And we're on chapter 10. It gives you a little brief outline of where we are on, uh, on chapter 10 uh, uh, for this. Listen, let me say this again. The book of Leviticus is not a dispensation of where we're living today. Okay? This is not where we are today. And you'll see that next week when we get in chapter 11 and talk what you can't eat. And one of the things that tells us we can't eat is rabbit. And everybody probably in here probably tasted it once or twice anyway. Okay? A little bit of something. Okay? Um, but, but things have changed. Okay? So here it is. So very about what is important about Leviticus uh, for, uh, for my life. What, what, what's important? Why are we studying the book of Leviticus uh, for, for me? It, it, it's, it's not about the, it's, it, it's not about the uh, actual order and the actual guidelines that he gave. It is God responding people who were ordered to live and do holy even after they messed up. In other words, even in the life of believer, we may, I need some volume, please. We may, uh, we may make mistakes. You will make mistakes. Won't, you don't have to be separated from God. That's what I love about this. You, you don't have to be separated from God. And because he's holy, he gives holy instructions how not to be separated from him. Okay? All right. So let's look at this tonight. I, 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 to bring up the snuff, uh, our central message is, is, is simply this, uh, is that God who is holy requires his people to be holy. It is also shows that God is gracious for atonement for the sins of the shedding of blood of Jesus who brings us back into holiness. Atonement. At one meant. At one with God. That's all atonement is. It brings you back one with, with God. Our purpose is very simple. It simply is um, as Leviticus reveals the absolute holiness of God, okay, because God is holy, what Leviticus shows us is how God interacts with his people to establish a holy life. And to be interacting with God, you got to have a holy life. If not, you have to put yourself in a holy way. And we're going to talk about that tonight. Because even tonight, we're going to talk about that even though uh, there was sin done, things done right, for them to get right with God to protect the anointed on their life, they had to be in a holy place. Amen? All right. So all these, all these things about, uh, you, know, our, I, you know, I do what I want to do. I get it right myself. No, no, no. You, let me say this tonight. You can't make your own rules to get in relationship with God. Okay? You, you can't do that. Many of us, many of us are part of organizations, fraternities, sororities, different orders, all stuff like that. Listen, you can't make your own rules to get in. You got to abide by the rules. I sat in the meeting last night. I was like, good Lord, time to go home. And the debate was over a rule. It's the rule. <laughs> Either you abide by the rule or you don't, you don't, I don't want to say go home, you don't reap the benefits 
of what it, what it has to offer you. Same thing as with God, okay? All right. So then what it, what is holy? It's a Greek word. The word, you know, it's what, what the word that rams it reference, it means God. It refers to who he is. Holiness simply means we belong to God. All right? It, uh, the New Testament, as it states on your screen there, set apart. Okay? To be set apart. To be set apart. The state of being holy. And when I was coming up, they used to call us up on the hill up here, holiness church. They, they didn't call the name of the name. It had a name. It was called written the devil. <laughs> but they called it holiness church. They called Kirkland Church, holiness church. They called 106 over there, the holiness church. Had big old names on it, but called the holiness church. And for years, it seemed to be offensive. But according to the New Testament, it was an honor. It was an honor to be called a group of people that were set apart. You ought to enjoy every now and then when somebody got to say, oh, you one of them church people. You know, I know, I, I, listen, I, I ain't been at the workforce that long. Yes, I have almost 20 years, but I, been, <laughs> but, but I used to hear that, that they're going to, uh, uh, first on Dink, I used to hear it. They go to Holy Sergeant. They go to preacher soldier. I'd be like, oh man, come on, can y'all leave me alone? But but now that I have understanding, I was literally being honored. Because what I was told was really that I'm different. I'm set apart. Two things. Can I help you? Two things about it. It ought to make you feel good. And then you ought to be thankful that it reminds you in a world of calamity, sin, and destruction, that you're not like the world. Because say what you want to say every now and then, you, you find yourself being subject to want to act like the world. Or, or is that just me? Y'all holy? Okay, that didn't me. All right. Every now and then, I wish I could say what y'all been thinking about saying. Okay? But we're set apart. And so when people call you out in terminology like that, not only should you be honored, you should be thankful because it reminds you that you have been set apart. You're not like everybody else, okay? You're not everybody else, okay? So what did we talk about in the first five chapters? We talked about the burnt offering. The burnt offering meant covering. We talked about the grain offering, remembering, okay? We're going to talk about the grain offering tonight. The peace offering is fellowship, having peace with God, okay? The sin offering uh, the decamination, the, 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 uh, the of the, that thing that gets you in the opposite life of God. And then the guilt offering, what brings you back in? Restitution. Okay. Then we went to chapter 6. Chapter 6 talks about the, uh, the detail over of what sin and what God expects once people commit sin. This is what I love about the whole thing. God already knew that his children would do wrong. I'm going to help somebody again. God already knew. Okay, somebody say, I'll prove it. It's in Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the weaver prophet, simply says, he said, God, this is the problem. We built the temple. We're praising you. But God, I know them right now. It won't be long before they turn back to their ways. Now, we can sit here and condemn Israel all day we want to, but you can't sit there tonight and tell me the devil hasn't put in your mind, especially when people have done things bad to you. Think, you ain't going to tell me. You're going to sit there and say, Lord, back in the day, Lord. Okay, okay, y'all holy. I've said it, Sister Nelson. If they would have called me 30 years ago, oh, shot And I do mean that, shot shot you. Amen. Amen. It, 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 but God already knows this. And this is what I love about the text. Because God knows that we're subject to sin and make mistakes. He says, I'm going to give you a way to be reconciled back to me. Don't miss this before you even make the mistake. So then the New Testament writer says, and when you sin, yes. it's confirmation. And when you sin, you have an advocate. Thank you, Mr. Hall, but I got it tonight. You have an advocate. That's how much he loves you. 
All right, that ain't good enough for you. If, if Reverend if Mr. Taylor said, he said, that ain't good for, for you. Here's enough for you. And while you were a sinner, yeah. he died for you. Yeah. You ain't going to tell me God don't love me. How do you love it? When you love the good, the bad, and the ugly. And can I tell you something about you? God loves the good, the bad, and the ugly. And can I help you out? All of us got some good, some bad. Well, I ain't going to call myself ugly, but, you know, I guess some, not so, some ways. Yeah, thank you, First Lady. Got, I, I got some ugly ways. All right? I ain't call myself ugly. You ain't call yourself ugly. ain't call myself ugly. All right? Chapter 7, the continuation of the law offerings, how simple humanity can approach and worship God. We talked about that. We talked about it. when your simple ways do come, there's a way you get back to God. Okay? That's why every year for the last uh, uh, 13, 12, 13 years, we have consecration at the beginning of the year. Starting the church off getting back to God. Getting rid of all that stuff that's not like God. Okay? Give me all that stuff. Chapter 8, talked about the ceremony, consecration of the priest. Notice once again, I reviewed this, God set his order in place before he put the man or the priest of God in the house. What does that mean? That meant from the pulpit to the back door. Everybody is called to live a holy, separated life from God. So the next time you do that to the preacher, don't forget there's three of them pointing back at you. The standards with God are different, not with you, because you don't have the right you, it, it don't belong to you. I ain't gonna belong to you. All right. Chapter 9. Then we get to the work of the priest. Again, now that God put his order in place, now that God put the priest in place, now he says uh, in, in chapter 9, how to offer and worship the Lord. The ceremony meant nothing without anticipation of the Lord's presence. In other words, when you did it, when you worshiped him, you are to expect for God to do something. This is important. If God doesn't respond to your worship, if God doesn't respond to your sacrifice, if God doesn't respond to your prayer, it's not God that need to be checked. It's you that need to be checked. God responds. But don't miss it. He responds to people that do it in a holy way. You can't, and we're going to talk about it tonight. You're going to find out right in the first three verses. You just can't come to God any kind of way. And let me throw something else at you. For years, the church has had rituals and traditions. And I know we live in an age now, um, 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 I guess I'm old school. We live in an age now where people now are saying tradition. It don't take that. And, and you don't know my heart. And God ain't requiring me of that. But let me tell you something. God put leaders in place to make sure that their lives didn't live so separated from him. Now, hear me good. Hear me good. Up on the hill. Yeah, they have some things we don't do now. But can I tell you something? It kept people with a mind that if I'm going to do God, I got to do it in a right way. And because they did not have everything under God, God allowed man to put things in place so that people would do what was right. It was God. It was the man of God that would be held accountable. In other words, when I was coming up, you couldn't come to God's communion without your head covered. You couldn't sing and serve with, your, with, with, with all your thighs and your body. You couldn't do it. Now, it shouldn't matter. It should, no, it shouldn't. But there still should be a standard of holiness. I never forget, I never forget, I never forget, uh, I wore a suit. I wore, <laughs> yeah, I wore a suit. Sister Dawkins, and it was a it, had, it was a mustard color. I thought I was clean. It was mustard and brown. I was digging dingers. I thought I was clean, man. I put that mustard suit on, had a beige shirt, nice brown tie, had me some brown stakes abs on. I walked in there, digging this miller. They looked at me like I was crazy. They literally thought I had done bumped my head. And afterwards, service, I done preach, I done did my thing. I said, What's wrong when I got on? They told me they didn't know I had anything in the in my closet with color. 
and this is what they were. We thought you was a hole in this preacher. I said, what do you mean? Because you, 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 we ain't never seen no loud color suit or nothing like that. I got hooked into that. And I still believe in conservative. I still believe when you're preaching and teaching the word of God, there's nothing ought to be about your tie that'll take the attention off of, off of the word, of, you know, off of the message. So, no, you'll never see me in a yellow peacock suit trying to teach or preach. Matter of fact, you ain't going to see me one outside. <laughs> I mean, but you're not. Okay, our lives should be accordingly. Our lives should live accordingly. So yes, there are some traditions that no, we don't have to do anymore. Yes, there are some traditions that we don't have to put in place anymore. But at the same time, they did it to make sure, just like God told the priest, put things in place that reminds them when you come to me, you ought to come to me with a separate life from the world. And that's all he's asking us to do now. At Holy, we should do separate things. There's certain things that we should do. Amen? I tell St. Paul all the time, you know, we did this, and, and I never forget, we start doing this and putting lights up here, and people start calling this a stage. This ain't no stage, baby. I'm sorry. This is a pulpit. This is where God's word is proclaimed, taught, delivered for his people now when we build our, our family community center then i'll give y'all a stage but this as long as i'm allowed to be will be a pulpit you declare what god has done from here Amen. yes and y'all be so rep sometimes yes it starts with me every night i gotta put myself in check and remind myself doing observation announcement that hey pop bar this ain't the time to be announcing about chicken dinners this ain't time to be talking about who had the best potato salad. This is designed to tell people who come to hear what God has to say about their life. Now, if I want to talk about your chicken salad, then I go down on the floor. I tell you, you missed all the, you know, salt and pepper. It was bland. But that's not what this has been designed to do. And so are your lives. Your lives are to be holy. Your lives are to represent a holy God. And I'm here to tell you today, if you don't live a life of daily repentance, you're missing the target. You're missing it all day. Okay? All day, all day. I never heard, I never forget. I, uh, I, I, I saw this one day. Uh, it wasn't on a meme or some of on social media. I don't know how. I think somebody sent it to me an email. It was, it was a while back. I don't think Facebook was big then, but a while back. And I never forget it. Dick and Dingus. It said. It, it said. It says all day long. It said. It says all day. I've been good. All day. I thought no evil. All day. I just been with the Lord. All day. I've been perfect. So I kept reading. Then it said, but Lord, in a few minutes, I'm about to get out of this bed. <laughs> and my day is getting ready to start. And he said, Lord, I need your help. <laughs> Amen. Lord, I need your help. And you, can y'all say that? I know I can say that, Lord. Uh, before I get out of the bed, Lord, uh, all day. Because they had started. It ain't my fault you don't get to five, six o'clock. They started at midnight. All day, Lord, I ain't I've been good. I ain't said nothing. I ain't did nothing. The only person can't say that is Naomi. Because at two o'clock, she hollering, I'm here. <laughs> can't be hollering at nobody. <laughs> All, right. All day, you need the Lord. Okay? So all day we need to be him. So let's go through chapter ten very quick. What what does ten talk about? Well, Leviticus ten simply is a sad story about uh, about a Nadab and about and a and and a Bala, two brothers who are the sons of Aaron. Abala and Nahab they do something that is out of the holy ritual that keeps them holy with God. Let me say it again. They do something out of the holy ritual that keeps them in holy relationship with God. It's very important you remember that because what they did was not something that was just to be foolish. In so many contexts, they just thought they could get to God any kind of way. You can't come to God all willy-nilly. When you come to church, you ought to be prayed up. 
When you, when you come to church, you should ought to have worship. You should ought to be, you ought to be worship. And I, and I shared with somebody today, I don't mind being prime anymore. You say, I, we ain't, you know, y'all, y'all used to remember that sister Nelson, uh, uh, sister Boone, we do praise and worship right here. Y'all know what I'm saying? We ain't get them praise teams up there. We not up here to pump and prime, y'all. We ain't here. It ain't a lie. You tell, yes, you are. Can I tell you why? You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what has happened in my life. And because the spirit of God is laying in me, that's why I came here. I came here so you can take a bucket of water, put in my well, and prime me and remind me that God has been good to me. You are a pump. You are a primer. And I don't mind pumping and priming you. Every now and then you see it on Sunday. If I ain't ready, I'll sing myself happy. But I, would, I'm, I, get, I need to get myself together. Pump and prime, okay? So when you get here, you ought to be good, ready to go. These two brothers, they do something wrong. Let's look at it. Let's look at the, hear me, hear me good. I want you to see something. If you have been following this, God has put his house in place. God says, God, God says, God says, God says, because I know you're going to mess up. Now, y'all ain't going to like me tonight. I'm going to put something in place to bring you back. Look at the first group of people that mess up. Now, y'all going to like this, especially black church. Y'all going to like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing this 30 years. Y'all going to like this. Look at the first group of people that mess up. Anybody know who it is? The preacher. Two preachers. Down at the Georgia Town Tear. Y'all ain't going to send that name. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Sister Dick. You know, the blue chip. Okay, listen, listen. Look, 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 look at what happened. Let's read it. Aaron's sons, Nabal and Abala, and Ab and Abala, both put coals of fire in their incense burners. Sprinkled the incense over them. They put their own incense in their burners that had been designated for God only. Help me out, James Moore. God don't need no matches. He's five. He didn't need their help. Okay, all right, all right. In this way, they disobeyed the Lord by burning before him the wrong kind of fire. Y'all ain't going to like me in here. Some people got the wrong kind of worship. Jumping, shouting, dancing, skipping, full of hell. That ain't worship. When you worship God in holiness, chapter 9 says he will respond. Everything else is shape, form, and fashion. Hear my digging this Miller. Outside show. You don't need to say outside show to the world. God ain't looking for that mess. And can I tell you something? Kept somebody out. Maybe you're watching me online. Uh, uh, we getting tired of it. We getting tired of your play play church. We're getting tired of you shouting when you sing. Tired of you getting happy when you preach. Tired of you going in tongues when you pray. We're tired of it. Because we want to connect ourselves with a holy God. All right. All right. All right. Let's move on. So they brought their own kind of fire. Different than what he had commanded. God again has a right to call for holy rituals, holy ordinance because it was God that took them out of bondage. He had the right. I tell these two beautiful young girls all the time. Why? Because it's my house. Me and your mama have a right. Zaria tried to do something to her room and praise the Lord. We had to remind her that J.P. Mortgage got our name on it. And sadly, mm -hmm. God said 
said you were in bondage. God said you cried. God said you couldn't get out of it. And God said, I went and got Moses. When you couldn't even get to him, I went and got Moses and took you out of bondage. I brought you through the Red Sea. I brought you over Jordan. I brought you to the witness. Doggone it, I got the right to tell you what to do. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Okay, don't tell him thank you. He woke you up this morning. He kept you from dying today. He kept you from seeing an unseen danger. He kept food on your table. He kept the blood running. He has a right to say, worship me in spirit and in truth. And guess what? You ain't got no input. Won't he do it? You know, some people love to go back and forth. My part, my this. That's good here on earth. But you ain't got no part with God. Ain't, ain't, this, ain't, ain't no negotiation. He said, ain't no negotiation with God. How many of y'all know I'm telling the truth? How many of them prayed for God to do something and he did the total opposite? Did you pack up your blood pressure? Did you pack up your air? Did you pack up your water? Did you pack up your food and clothes, your life history? And talk, I'm leaving. No, you know what you did? You did like I did. My mama told me you sat there and you took it. Because you know, you knew at the end of the day, all things work together for the good of them that love him and called according to his purpose. All right. They gave him their own fire. So God responds. One thing about the holiness of God you can count on is when you use his stuff wrong, He's going to respond. Oh, yes, Lord. Keep playing with them. Keep using your incense. And, 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 and Sister Nelson, I tell people all the time, people like to worship them with their gifts. But they don't worship them with their anointing. I know I just said, that's a good place to take an offering. But if I was on the hill, I'd take a good offer right there. That's $20 line right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sound good with your gift. You look good with your gift. You even, you even, you, you even stir us up with your gift. But then when I leave here, none of it works because I never felt your anointing. The anointing makes the difference. That's your gift. And the only reason you got the gift with your, with your ungodly and unholy ways is because God said, I can't repent of my sin. You better tell them, Naomi. I can't repent of it. In other words, I can't take it back. But I do know one thing. I can keep you from benefiting from it. I can keep you from benefiting from it. But I ain't going to take it back. Okay? Okay? Fire came. They start the fire. God responds. What well, you know? What I love about this, y'all. Look, look at verse two. So listen, listen, listen. You ready for this? I gotta move on. Listen. And so they, they, they came there and they sprinkled incense over them. In this way, they disobeyed the Lord, burning before Him the wrong kind of fire. Right, 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 right. Watch God. Watch God. Watch God. Uh, uh, different than the one He commanded them. What, what, yeah. so, 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 so God did not ignore them. Look at verse 2. So the fire blazed forth from the Lord's presence and burned them up. They went there, tried to put their fire together. <laughs> and the fire that was not in the holy command of God. God literally took their own fire, threw it back at them like, 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 like the move American man and burnt them up with their own fire. Not only, not only did God allow them to burn a fire for worship, but took the same fire and said, I am God. I don't need it. Take it back. Five brothers, they died. Look, and look at where they died. Now, this is, this is church. You got to be careful. They were the priests. They had a 
congregation. He didn't die in front of the church. And I tell you all the time, church, be careful when you attack your leader. Let God, I promise you, let God take care of them. There's better results. There's better results. No, 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 no. Look at, look at, look at, they died before the Lord. Not before people. Now, people heard about it. Don't get me wrong. Let's move on. And then Moses said unto Aaron, this is what, this is what the, the Lord meant when he said, I will display my holiness through those who come near me. I will display my glory before all the people. Aaron was silent. In other words, God is saying, listen, I told you. I shared with you. I will not share my glory with another. And their fire was not the fire that was ordained or a sign for God's glory to show up. And God said, I am not sharing my glory, my fire with nobody. Take it back. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. So there they are. They came their own way. And they, and they put this fire up. And God said, no. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. This is not what we do. Okay, when we come to God, you just can't come any kind of way. You have to come his way. Second, last thing on this part is what God is saying is also because I'm holy. When you come to worship with me, when you bring a sacrifice to me, when you come to me, if you don't come a holy way, I'll reject it. And that's what he did. He rejected their worship brothers and sisters make sure that when you worship God make sure that you repent and you prepare yourself for God to receive your worship because the text just proved if you try to do it your way like you are Frank Sinatra God says your way will never su supersede my way, and I will reject it. Look at like what happened now. Look at the aftermath. Watch this. Watch this. The body, listen. Then Moses called for Michelle, uh, me, Michelle, and Elzaphar, Aaron's cousins, the sons of Aaron's uncle, uh, Uzziah. He said to them, come forward and carry away the bodies of your relatives from, from in front of the sanctuary to a place outside the camp. Y'all remember the scripture where Jesus said, let the bed, dead bury the dead? No, you, let your own people do this. No, uh, no, no, no. I know the rich of the churches. Let the ch no, 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 no. Let your own people do this. Let them see the results of unholy worship. Let them see the results of doing things wrong. Let them see the results of not worshiping me the right way. He says, you know, come and get them. So listen, so they came forward, picked up them, picked them up at, uh, by their garments. They carried them out of the camp just as Moses had commanded them. These men were moved. Nahaz and Abula's body uh, uh, were not related to Aaron. Uh, uh, they were related to Aaron and his sons. But they were not in priestly duties. In other words, God would not allow those who did it right to even dabble with the dead of those that were doing it wrong. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not going to have that. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch, watch, watch this. Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons, Eleazar and Etamar, do not show grief by leaving your hair uncombed. Wouldn't have that problem. Uh, or by tearing your clothes. If you won't, if, if you do, you'll die. And the Lord's anger will strike the whole community of Israel. However, the rest of the Israelites, your relatives, may mourn because of the Lord's fury, destruction of Nahab and Abula. Listen. You're not having this big old family reunion funeral ain't no repast come on african americans ain't no fish on friday in front of the yard 
Ain't no pouring out no 40 on the grave. No. Because they did wrong against God even at their death. Refrain from unholy. Refrain from it. Don't put yourself in a mourning state. Don't put yourself in sackcloth and ashes. Comb your hair. Get ready to worship. Put yourself in a position. Basically, what he told them was, stay holy. Somebody say, stay holy. Oh, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Stay holy. This had to be the hardest day for Aaron. Think about it. Two of his sons, these were his sons. They were ordained as priests like him. And you're telling me my sons are dead? And you're telling me I can't go to the funeral? I cannot mourn the sons? There's a movie, and I don't watch it maybe once or twice. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't watch it a few times. Can we say that? Called Taken. It's, it's, one, it's one of my favorites. I think it's one of my favorites. Uh, Sister Barr kind of watches it, you know. 15 times a week. Yeah, no, that be me, yo. I, I do. I, I've watched Taken. Taken 2 and Taken 3. I watched all of it. I think it's Taken 2, if I'm not mistaken, where uh, uh, Lemus, Lemus, the, uh, uh, the Lemus, the name we got, the star, Leon Lemus, he kills the man's son. Y'all remember that? And in the, he kills the man's son. And in the process of killing the man's son, the man says to him, he says, what about the life of my son? Loma says to him, Neeson, was it Neeson? Liam? Neeson. Neeson. Says to him, he says to him, he says, well, what about the people your son killed. He says to him, I don't care. It's about my son. Can you imagine Aaron being told to forget about your sons because of their ungodly act? It sounds harsh, don't it? But when he tells us to be not unequally yoked. When he tells us to let the unholy stay unholy. Unclean, unclean. When he calls you out of light, out of darkness, into a separated life, a life, God means what he say. And then Jesus picked it up. And Jesus says, he who only follows Christ is my brother and my sister. That relationship with God is serious. And you can't even let your own family separate you. Did you hear Apostle Paul? And who and what can separate me from the love of God? And so he tells, don't moan. Don't, 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 you, don't you do that. Leave, 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 leave that alone. Don't leave, leave that leave, leave alone. Listen, verse, verse, uh, verse 7, but you must leave... You must, you must not leave the entrance of the tabernacle. Don't go to the funeral or you will die. You have been anointed with the Lord's anointing oil. So they did as Moses commanded. In other words, I need you to stay here. Because this sin, which has contaminated the community. If you leave from a holy place. And get into that contaminated community. Listen what he says. You lose. Or you put at risk. Your anointing. <laughs> Don't leave the tabernacle. Now let me bring it to the day. Bring it to the day. When ungodliness happens. And the results of ungodliness comes forth. God is saying, stay with me. Don't leave my presence. Don't leave my, uh, uh, my house. Stay 
with me. Stay with the tabernacle. For the tabernacle of the Lord is with us. Stay with God. He said simply, he said, say, so they did, as, they did as the, as the Lord commanded. Look at verses, look at verses 8, 8 through 11. Then the Lord said to Aaron, look, watch this, watch this how to conduct yourself. The Lord say, uh, said to Aaron, you and your descendants must never drink wine or any other alcoholic drink before going into the tabernacle. If you do, you will die again. Anything, anything, anything that's going to separate you. He says, if you do, you will die this is a permanent law for you. Now, don't, don't get too holy on me. If this is a permanent law now, so I'm just asking, Miss Harden, did that mean every now and then they got a little shot before they went in? A little nod ahead for the, for the soul's sake? I'm just asking. Because it just became a permanent law when sin lifted itself I believe it is a result of their action is what we're seeing now I believe God is listing how this mistake happened theologians and commentaries say that maybe that's why they act so foolery in there maybe they had a little too much of the hen on the sea maybe they had a little too much of the wine maybe instead of being merry and had a good time they got muffled and marred and then went into there and did what they wanted to do and got carried away however it came about it says don't do it this is a permanent law you must observe it from generation to generation or uh, you must distinguish between what is sacred and what is common they didn't do that. Again, I'm looking at this, pulling from this, what I see. The picture is they died from their actions. Why would God and why would God allow his servant to put these in place if this was not a part of what may have occurred with their foolishness? So he says, stay away from alcohol. That may have called you. Then he says, listen. Stay away from ungodly things. Stay away from the common and sacred. They tried to bring, the Bible said, they tried to bring their own fire in. That's common. Stay away from the common. Stay with the, with the sacred. Between, between what is ceremonial, clean, and unclean. And then you must teach the Israel, Israelites. All, this, all the decrees of the Lord was given to them, to Moses. This is something permanent. Don't lose it. I believe, I believe with most commentaries and theologians that some of these actions was a result to why Aaron's two sons went in there foolishly. Again, you ready? My grandmama taught me some things going to church. Certain things you just don't do in church. Don't you know come in no church? Sounds funny, right? Well, the other day I was cleaning the church from a funeral from a family that obviously didn't know church and found a brand new carpet back there. Big old thing of gum. You didn't have that problem when I was a kid because you weren't supposed to chew no gum. If you did, you got popped in the head, got pinched on the shoulder, or they put a fan in front of you. Y'all remember, remember? Coleman Funeral Home Fan. When Zach used to run Coleman there, right in front of you, and then they shove it at you. Anybody, how many of y'all remember Miss Alma Brown? Come on, y'all. Say amen. Oh, yeah, some of y'all, look at some of y'all guilty. I'm just getting to raise your hand. Yeah, Ms. Al Brown walked in there, smile at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mama, t Mama told me when you go to church, dress decently and in order. Couldn't come to church any kind of way. Now people come to church half naked, clothes checking their blood pressure. I'm just saying, any kind of way. And I'm not talking about those who come initially. Those that come initially, their job is to come initially. Our job is to show them, show them that you don't have to dress like that. You can dress just as nice and look just as gorgeous and something decently and in order. Amen, somebody? Amen. Grandma told me don't run in church. There's a lot of things grandma told me don't do in church. There's a way you had to take communion. 
When we said daughter and the bishop bring, I mean superintendent bring things right now, put your head down, boy. In other words, she was teaching me to have humble submission when you're at the Lord's table. Don't come there with pride and arrogance. You know? Boy, shut up. This is him of meditation. Get your get your job, get get right. I was getting ready to go to sleep. But those things taught me how to approach God. Okay, all right. So listen to what he says. Um, verse 12. Moses and Aaron, Aaron his sons, remaining sons, Elzar, El Tamar, take what is left of the grain offering. After a portion has been presented, a special gift to the Lord, and eat it beside the altar. Make sure it contains yeast. No, I mean no yeast. For it must be, it must be, it must be. It is most holy. You must eat it in a sacred place. For it has been given you, your descendants, as a portion of the special gifts presented of the Lord. These are the commands I have been given. And the beast, but the beast and the thigh that were lifted up for a special offering may be eaten in any place that, that, that is ceremonially clean. These parts have been given to you and your descendants as your portion of peace offerings presented by the people of Israel. You must lift up that thigh, you must lift the thigh and the breast and a special offering the Lord along with the fat of the special gift. These parts will belong to you and your descendants as, as your permanent right just as the Lord commanded. Let's bring all that in a nutshell. It's not about the parts of the animals and what was eaten and all that. Back in the day, these parts that were supposed to be eating and the parts supposed to be sacrificed had value to them. What this lesson is telling us tonight is that if you're going to get right with God, you got to obey his commands. And he gave them specific instructions in how to get over this mess that your sons have committed. The Bible says he got these instructions. He gave them instructions. Couple of things that I want to move on. First of all, he says, do what I say do. Don't alter what God says do. That's why I show people all the time. I'm very uh, a skeptic of Bibles and different translations of the Bible. Don't add, don't subtract. One of my biggest ones is I think it's four or five editions when it says these things come out. Some Bibles only have by prayer. No, they were already praying and they still couldn't cast it out. Jesus says if you want this kind to come out, that's the misinterpretation. It don't say it don't say anything. It says these kind. You know what? There's some specific things that if you want God to oh help yourself, my whole whole yeah yeah yeah. If you want God to do, you gotta pray and you gotta fast. Somebody ought to say Amen. Some things I shared my wife the other day was at the table. Told I'm in a stronghold of man. There's some strongholds that takes more than just praying. There's some strongholds take more than just singing. There's some strongholds take more than you just dancing and shouting. Some of this stuff, you got to pray. Turn over your plate. Get prostrate for the Lord and let the Lord work it out. Yes. He said, these things, this kind, this situation, you got to do both, baby. You got to pray and you got to fast. Some Bible is taking that thing out. And that's why people praying still catching hell. Praying still can't get delivered. Praying that God still ain't working on your behalf. Praying and God ain't turning around. No, baby, you know why? Because you're not doing what his word say. He says, these kind. And when you look at these kind, go back and read what these kind were. The person was possessed. The devil had taken over. Let me help somebody tonight. If the devil has taken over and you done got exhausted of it, it's time, baby, to do more than now I lay me down to sleep. It's time to pray. It's time to seek God. It's time to
come to fast. And yes, sir, it's time for you to live holy. If not, wake up in the morning. It'll be right there next to you in the toilet paper in the restroom. Some things take more than just you praying. I prayed about it. But what else did he tell you to do? Here, there are some specific instructions. He says, not only are you not to eat certain, or eat certain things or drink, he says this, when you do it, make sure your atmosphere is holy. Look at, look at, look at what he said. I wouldn't lie to you. He said, this got to be done where? In a sacred place. Sacred place is a holy place. Look at verse 13. You must eat in a sacred place. Can I tell you something? You ought to have a sacred place where you and God meets and ought to be sacred for you. All right? Let me close tonight. So here it is. He gives them these instructions to do. What to eat. Where to eat it. Once again, before you judge the text, make sure that you remember God had a right to dictate what to do. Don't tell me what to do. You ain't God. That's about the best thing you done said all night. God can. And don't do it. You'll find yourself being drugged out too. Oh no, help me out because that rolled in. God ain't got time. God ain't playing with you. God ain't got time for you. Not, 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 play with you like that. not if you're going to play with him. No, he's holy. He's separated. He expects for you to be separated. Okay? If you get separated. My, 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 uh, uh, my girls are, 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 are learning to pray. Well, well Zara not pray. Name is learning, learning, learning to pray. And it may sound funny. And I know people don't do it no more. But I'm adamant. Put your hands together. Remember, well, what is that going to do? That ain't teaching her nothing. Yes, it is. It's telling her every time you go to God. This is what I'm trying to instill in her vengeance, Jackson. That you got to put your hand together. Then you gotta, no, I'm, I'm hoping that her mother and I are teaching her when you go to God, you put yourself in a posture to talk to God. No, she ain't got to put it. Because I don't do it all the time. Sometimes you die, then Lord, no, 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 no. But what I am reminded is when I get ready to talk to him, I can't be on my phone. When I talk to him, I can't be having a sidebar conversation. When I talk to him, I can't be flipping the channels on my TV. When I talk to God, I got to be in a place that is sacred, both mind, spirit, body, and soul. So when I talk to him, I can say the words of the song, the safest yeah, in the whole wide world. I can talk to him. So no, it ain't about, it ain't talking about, about putting her hands together. No, 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 no. It's about making sure that every time she knows when she goes to God. And can I tell you something? When she does pray, if now you're at the table, two things, you, I know she does. I'm using her because she's the youngest of all of them. She knows that everybody got to bow their heads. And Naomi looks. Now, she wants everybody else's eyes to be closed, but she's looking. And next thing she knows, if it's family prayer, you got to hold hands. If you don't hold hands, she get mad. <laughs> it sounds funny and childish. But I pray that when she gets like the other ones in college and stuff like that, she'll remember when you go to God, you got to be in a sacred state going to God, okay? All right. So, listen, this is what happens, and I'm done. This is how we're done. done. Verse 16, verse 16. Look at, look, look at what happens. Moses then asked them, what happened to the gold of the sin offering? When he discovered it had been burned, and he, uh, burned up, he became very angry with Eleazar and Etamar. At Hamar, Aaron's remaining sons, why didn't you eat the sin offering in the sacred area like I told you to? I commanded you to do so. It was a holy offering. 
The Lord has given it to you to remove all the guilt of the community. Because remember, you had to do it here. Remember, it couldn't leave the tabernacle. Because the community had been what? Contaminated. Don't do it. You can't lose the tabernacle. Don't lose the tabernacle. He says, he says, he says, he says, he says to them, what happened? This was the community. And to purify, purify the people. Making them right with the Lord. You still had an assignment. Why didn't you do this? Since the animal's blood was not brought into the holy place, you should have eaten the meat in the sacred area as I ordered. He's, he, 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 what's going on here? Aaron, sons, did you not just see what happened in verses 1 and 2? Did you not just see when you don't obey God's command? What happened? What, 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 what happened? 19, Aaron said, Moses, let me give you the truism of my day. Somebody ought to say amen. Let me give you the truism of my day. This is what happened. Today, my sons, whether they were drunk or not, Today, my sons, whether or not they had holy or common fire or not, today, my sons, both presented their sin offering, their burnt offering to the Lord. And yet, this tragedy has happened for me. If I had eaten the, eat, eaten the, the people's sin offering of such a tragic day as this, would the Lord, would the Lord have been pleased? This is very confrontational because you have to admit what you see, what you see is disobedient of God. At the end of the day, the man of God gave them instructions. Their job was to follow the man of God's instruction. Moses had proven that he was the man of God. And they didn't do it. But the text says in verse 20, it says, and Moses heard this and he was satisfied. How could God's servant be satisfied by disobeying his command? Can I tell you what happened? Hmm? Aaron said it himself. I was in a traumatose state. I saw what my sons did. Aaron says this simply. I rather have not done anything than to make another mistake before God. Why then is Moses satisfied? Moses is satisfied because he respects the fact that he honored and loved God. God so much that he would not put himself back in a position with his only two sons left and mess up and God be displeased. Well, that sounds good, Reverend Bob, but what did God say? God said through his servant. Don't get me wrong. That's the difference now. I, I, I mean, that's the difference now. Moses was God's spokesman. People honored the men of God. I'm just being honest with you. Aaron is okay because Moses says, Texas Moses is satisfied. So what does that mean, remember? That means Moses went back and pleaded to God. Y'all going to wake up in a minute and get happy, good Baptist folks. I'm going for with this. Hear me out. They didn't do what he said. Grace, Reverend Dawkins, has not been slipped in dispensation yet. But he's still God. 
He still loves his people. And so when Moses is satisfied, what Moses does, he goes back to God. <laughs> Boy, make yourself happy. I think I will. And he talks to God on behalf of, of Aaron and his sons. And he says unto them, Father, forgive them. They were in a traumatized statement. Satan, he was nervous. He was scared. But God, he loved you so much that he wouldn't put it at chance. So God, here I am, your servant, asking you not to destroy Aaron and his son, but give them another chance. Here you go. I know you was waiting on it. I was waiting on it too. That's why. On oh, one cold, I wish Lisa was here. I holler right there. Chilly Friday night, Jesus died for your sins. And when you mess up, when you don't do it right, you got an advocate. His name is Jesus the Christ. And when you mess up, when you do things out of the order, he goes back to the Father and say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And God responds and says, as long as they repent, I'm satisfied. I don't know about you tonight, but I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I may not do it like you want me to. But as long as I got a, rela he, a relationship with him, he understands me. I understand him. And can I tell y'all something? And tonight, I'm telling you, I'm telling you on tonight, I'm standing on victory. Yes, sir, you wouldn't know, but I'm standing on victory. On to, yes, sir, I'm standing on victory tonight, and I'm here to tell you, I'm satisfied with the Lord. He didn't do it when I wanted him to. He didn't do it, but this, I'm satisfied with Jesus because he went back to God. And when God said, how would eat the meat, then eat the meat. Y'all ain't going to sit in here. How we don't do this? Oh, oh Lord. No, no. He went back to the father and said, that's your servant, Dale. He still loves you. He still loves you, Lord. That's your servant. Don't kill him. Don't, don't kill him. And so the songwriter say, grace and mercy brought me here. I'm living this moment just because of him. Father, in Jesus' name tonight, I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight, that your people may be redeemed, restored, and revived by this word. Lord, we do know that we're not living under the laws of the old commandment, but God, we are living in a dispensation of grace that still calls us to live holy before you. Thank you for giving us instructions to understand that what you say to do to be connected to you in a holy way is still the order of the day. Bless your people now, we pray pray in Jesus name. Amen. Somebody say thank the Lord. All right. My time is up. Listen. Now some of you that are uh, astute and you're probably going to read chapter 11 and say wait a minute now. I ain't coming here next week. I don't, I don't hear pastor talking about no eat no rabbit. He know I'm from Georgia. I know the Lord talk about no eat no, no crawfish. He know I'm from the islands. Again. 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 Don't come next week. Thinking pastor going to tell you, don't eat lobster. Now listen, if you get convicted and you don't eat it, and you got them tucked away in your freezer, bring them to the priest. I will take them to a sacred place called Kadupur Cove. I will lay them before my altar called the stove. And Deacon S. Miller, I will consume it. <laughs> That's not, no, no. What I'm saying is that I don't want you to be scared by that. The reason for it is to make sure that we understand once again, you just can't come to God any kind of way. And that's all I'm trying to get you out of the book of Leviticus. If you notice, I'm not putting no laws in place, no things like that. We've been delivered from stuff like that. 
When I was coming up, ladies, first Sunday, you know, hair wasn't covered, no communion. Cotton stockings. I mean, that, that was the order of the day. No jewelry. You know, I remember, <laughs> I remember grandma said, look at her. Them big old chandeliers on, that ain't holy. <laughs> if you had anything bigger than a pearl or a stud, yeah, she said, you had no chandeliers. <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. We're talking, we're looking at how God put things in place for us to stay connected to him holy. The reason I'm expressing this is if you want to live a kingdom life that God owns, you're going to have to abide by God's principles, not your own. Not your own. They used to sing an old song, God got a way that you can't go under. God got a way that you can't go over. God got a way you can't come around. You must come in at the door. Amen. If you want to enjoy kingdom living, you won't have to come to the door. The good thing about it is you don't have to knock on the door. He's already knocking. Only thing you got to do is open it up. Amen. God bless you. Listen, will you share an offering on tonight? Those of you online, will you share an offering on tonight? We're going to let you. There you are. There's a multiple ways of giving on tonight. Uh, giving on tonight. Uh, if you'd like to give by credit card, you can call right now. If you're in the sanctuary, you can go in the back. Again, if you want to give by credit card tonight, you can call. The number's there on the screen. 561-278-7149. You can call tonight. <laughs> call tonight if you want to give online those of you in the sanctuary if you just drop something in one or two boxes listen matter of fact in the sanctuary tonight uh uh uh, uh minister hard can you just bring that one instead of going all these different places just put it right there just drop it in the best friend the center and go out uh, that way the finance team will have to check all over the sanctuary okay just put it in one central location all right to those of you online thank you so very much for joining us the lord bless you for your giving lord keep for your giving thank you so very much join me Again, this Sunday uh, at, at 9 a.m. for Sunday school, immediately following that would be our morning worship and Holy Communion. Let me also make this announcement to those that are on the online. We want to invite you to join us in person on this Sunday at the morning worship. We will be praying and anointing our young people for school, all ages, all ages, not just, you know, I guess like grades, class, but all daycares, uh, VPK college, tech, whatever whatever a young person is doing to involve themselves, to further themselves, we want to pray for them. Those of you that work in the education system at whatever level, I mean from crossing guard to teachers to administration to the cafeteria to the janitorial uh, to an aftercare at your house. If you have any involvement with a child, please come. We will be anointing you. If you need to, if you want to be protected, please bring your mask and because of it, because I love the people of God, when I do pray for you i will be wearing a mask i'm vaccinated i believe in it i'm believing the bomb in gilead but for the for your safety when i meet you down at the altar i will have on a mask come step out on faith let us agree and touch uh, for the sake of your children many of us have been watching the news for the last couple of days as they're getting into the sentence phase of uh of the cruise guy of parkland it is a reminder it again it is a reminder that our children need Need God's covering. Amen. Our faculties need God's covering. Amen. And so, so please bring them there. And then lastly, Friday night, Friday night, we will not be on our regular, I'm sorry, Friday morning. We will not be on our regular prayer line. Our information is on our, our website, I do believe. Uh, if not, just give us a call. Join us. We will be having prayer, amen, with our entire association. We'll be praying with people as far south as Florida City and as far north as Cocoa Beach, Florida. So join us on that Friday, amen. I think that's it. So those of you online, God bless you. Look forward to seeing you Sunday at 9 a.m. To those of you in the sanctuary, amen. Amen. My heart is filled with joy that you came out tonight. Amen. It, I, I mean, my heart is filled with joy, and I pray that you receive something tonight.